Hi everyone, it's James here uh, from Raisley. And if you're just sort of logged on in and are attending this, let me say welcome. It's great to have you. If you want to do one of the first things in this, let us know that you're here. Um, it would be unreal. Best way to do that is uh, just put up in either the chat, let us know that you're here. Uh, maybe even where you're from, what organization you're representing would be terrific. Um, another one as well is it's really great within these webinars to sort of be able to see sort of everyone that's attending these as well. Uh, so you can just go in there and make your selection as all attendees and you can see everyone that's sort of coming on board this webinar. But let me just say we're really excited about this webinar. We're really thrilled that you could come along and we're thrilled about the new reporting feature that we've been able to launch. This one's taken a lot of incredible uh, effort uh, from the team. And we are really hoping to see that it's a real value add for you uh, as you seek to just run some really great successful campaigns. Um, as we uh, kick off, let me just firstly just do an acknowledgement of country as we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land within our footprint areas. Mine would be the um, Awabakal people uh, and the Eora nations. We also pay respect to the wisdom of our elders past and present. Now, let us introduce a little bit of the team. I may be a bit of a new face, but let me introduce firstly a, a face that probably many of you already know, and that is Tom Maitland, our CEO, co-founder, Raisley Wizard, Tech God, whatever you want to call Tom. Uh, and we're thrilled that he can be on the webinar, and I think it's a real great opportunity to hear uh, from him, particularly as he's so close to our product. Let me also introduce Laura. Laura is one of our lead product and UX designers. Uh, she is very much behind much of the reporting feature and is look and feel and it's intuitive, intuitiveness and kind of all the little bits that you'll experience through that. And Laura's going to be taking us through some of that a little, little bit later on. And let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm James. I'm the product training manager at Raisley and I look after all things learning and education. So I'm really excited about helping you just become really confident in using uh, Raisley as an incredible platform to make a difference uh, through the work that you do. Now that's a little bit about us, but as I said before, if you've just jumped into the webinar, please make sure you use the chat, introduce yourself, let us know that you are here. Uh, we love seeing those uh, come in and make sure you select all attendees so you can see everyone join. Uh, we had about over 120 people uh, register for this webinar. So we hope to see a lot of you out there as well. Now, what we're going to be doing uh, today is a little bit simple. We don't want to take heaps, sort of everyone's time. Um, we want to make this as streamlined as possible, but also allow some time for you guys to put some questions in. And so what we're going to be looking at is three areas, really. Um, Tom's going to be presenting us the background of uh, this feature and really looking at why why this reporting feature is uh, it is what it is uh, and why it's come to fruition and some background information. Uh, Laura is going to be amazing and demo the environment for us. Uh, this is give you a bit of familiarity around some of the design uh, sort of decisions we made around that uh, to help the reporting feature be really intuitive for you. And last of all, I'll be going through some maybe just a bit of a practical use case on uh, on the reporting and some of the little nicks and bits that are in there uh, to sort of help you get started uh, as you look there. Sliced in each of those, we'll actually uh, have a question time, which you can just ask the person presenting or really any of us on the team, um, what sort of questions uh, you may have, and we'll allow a little bit of time for that. So we'll take about five minutes each for our presies, and then we'll allow about 10 minutes for question time. If you do have a question, the best way to do it is just put it into the question panel that you'll find uh, available uh, there in Zoom. Uh, if you do put it in chat, we'll probably see it as well. But uh, And if you're comfortable just doing that, that's fine. But ideally, it'd be great if you could put them in the questions so that our uh, panelists, Tom, Laura, and I can uh, look at those as well. But I'm going to keep on talking and uh, we're going to dive right into it. I'm going to hand it over to Tom uh, and he's going to take us through a little bit of the background as to this new reporting feature. Thanks, James. Hi, everyone. I'm going to start by acknowledging the land that I'm calling in from as well, which is uh, the beautiful Hillsville, uh, Rwandri country, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and, and recognize that this land was stolen and subsequently defeated. Um, I am here to talk to you about why reporting, 
we're really excited about this upgrade. The team's been working on it for about two months and working really hard. Um, and I think we've done a good job of it. Um, but I want to kind of go through all of that today, but I want to start by talking a little bit about um, why we made this change, why we chose to, to spend a little bit of time focusing on raises, reporting features. And to give you a bit of a peek behind our um, behind the scenes in terms of our decision making process when we're thinking about new features to build for the product. Um, when we go back to first principles for Raisley, we know how essential data is and that it's critical to you to deliver on your mission. Um, when we started Raisley back in 2016, the fundraising world uh, looked very different. And I'm sure there are people on the call who remember what things were like back in 2016. Um, one of the main insights for us that we wanted to solve by uh, starting Raisley was data. At the time, there were too many tools in the market that uh, gate kept data that supporters would sign up to, that then they would promote other charities, promote other courses, promote their own products. And as an organization, you couldn't get reliable reporting on your donors and your supporters. And we know how crippling that is for organizations because you all know how much work you spend talking to those supporters, engaging them, bringing them on a journey of impact. And so we think that that's, that's critical. And we even see that today, in particular with Facebook fundraising, really gatekeeping data and then really inhibiting organizations and, the ability, and their ability to fundraise. I think we all feel that. So that was one of the principles we started Raisley on was that when you're using Raisley, all of the data in the platform on your donors, your donations, your supporters, it's yours. Um, and that data is essential and it's never our job to hold that back or to gatekeep that. Um, that's important because it's important for you to be able to move things. It's important for you to be able to move to other tools, for you to try new things, for you to import data into your CRM and to um, learn from it, to analyze it, to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's not good enough, but it was hard to do that back then. And it's, it shouldn't be hard today either, even if things have improved quite a lot. For us, when we were designing Brazily and thinking about how we wanted to solve data accessibility, there were two things that we just felt were non-negotiables for us. The first was a good API, a really great API that people can access everything in Brazily, everything across the platform programmatically, because that's of course how you move data automatically is via an API, that's the, that's the gold standard. But secondly, we knew that we needed great reports. So you can download your data at any time in a clear, logical and accessible format. Uh, of course, CSV would how we did that. So we've had reports for a long time. This is nothing new, um, but they were pretty simple. The other thing that then prompted this upgrade is we've heard from you, uh, heard from our customers, heard from folks using Raisley, and we've heard from you a lot. And that's been over the last few years about um, areas of improvement in our reporting functionality. Um, in the past, just for anyone new to Raisley before this upgrade, what we'd let you do is we'd let you download a CSV report of different types of data in your fundraising campaign. In Raisley, you have multiple fundraising campaigns. You might have an appeal, you might have a P2P campaign, and you could build a report that let you download that data for that particular campaign with just the selection of fields that we have at the time. Um, but we heard a lot of feedback. Um, and feedback drives every single product decision we make here. Um, and we were frequently asked, uh, whether that was in demo calls, whether it was in uh, support conversations, we were asked questions that our reporting couldn't solve, uh, uh, that should have been able to, we felt it should have been able to. And they were things like, um, that as more of you ran more campaigns on Raisley, so you ran more than one campaign, you wanted to be able to report across all of those campaigns. It seems fairly logical and uh, reasonable thing to ask. We kind of call this in terms of our internal language all global reporting. The second was that formatting data was important to folks. Um, and that, I mean, the ability to add uh, blank columns um, or rename column names and initially we were like, why do you need to do this? You can do this easily in Excel. Um, but we learned a lot that it was all about making these reports clear um, and making it less work for you to import these reports into wherever they're going. Because sometimes tools have really specific requirements around blank fields or specific columns or column names that you're trying to match. Um, and over the past little while, we've even had very specific cases where folks have needed to match 
an existing report that they already have mapped to their tool. And they need it to match exactly um, or as close as possible because that saves them a whole bunch of time and energy reformatting, re-engineering, doing all sorts of things. And that's important. We should save time. We also heard third filtering is important. You need to get the data you need without needing to manipulate all of this in Excel or Google Sheets or something like that. And when it came down to it, a lot of the feedback we were hearing was not about this is impossible to do because it's easy to manipulate a spreadsheet in um, Excel or Google Sheets. It was all about time. Um, folks and charities, the people on the call, making the world a better place, don't have time to be wrangling data in sheets in Excel and manipulating things and renaming columns every time you want to do something with your information. Um, and Raisley should make reporting more powerful um, so you don't need to do that. So you can get that time back. The last little bit on efficiency we heard quite a few times, scheduling. So uh, I can have a report emailed to me without needing to go in and download it at the exact date range every day, week, month. So that's what we heard. Um, some people on the call might know uh, that uh, we have some solutions for this already. Um, because this feedback is not new. It's not being new coming up in the last few months. It's been years uh, of hearing this kind of thing. And about a year ago, we built a little work around. We call it organization reports. It's in the organization tab and raise it. We're not going to spend much time on it today. Organization reports were essentially a manual workaround where we said, oh, folks need all of this data. They need this flexibility. We need a way to make that easy. Um, and so we came up with a bit of workaround that was quick to build and, and, and pop into the product. Um, they were great. Organization reports solve some of these problems. Um, they extended the functionality of our regular reports, but gosh, they were manual. Um, if you wanted a report in a particular format, if you wanted it filtered, if you wanted across multiple campaigns, um, we were able to set those up for you, uh, but we were building them by hand. Our team was building them by hand uh, and any update needed to be made by hand as well. Um, that is not what accessible data looks like. That's not what accessible anything looks like. And that's not how we want to build rates. We don't want you to have to rely on us to do something fundamental um, within your fundraising. Uh, and it wasn't going to work on time. Um, but if we needed a sign of, of how many folks would benefit from some kind of reporting upgrade, well, that's the number there. I bet we've made 143 of these very manual reports by hand so far over the last year. Um, each of them unique in their own way. The last thing uh, was an opportunity to excel. So whenever we're making a product decision at Raisley, um, whenever we build product at Raisley, we aim to raise the bar. Um, and this was a chance to start doing that for reporting. Um, we know that this is an opportunity to save you time, uh, which means more fundraising, more time on fundraising, more effort directed towards the well-being of people on the planet. They're kind of all of the boxes we want to check when we build a feature. Um, but we want this feature to be excellent. Um, for reporting, we felt there was an opportunity to do this. Um, we felt that we could make it easy and flexible to build a report. Um, and we're sure that in the future, others that mimic this as well, benefiting more people. Um, the goal here should be that you love building a report. Uh, weird concept, I know. Uh, and that it's intuitive. You just get it. You don't need to read the support doc or really think about it or try to figure it out. So we've kind of tried to take what we've learned from our page builder, what we've learned from PDF receipts, um, where we show you a visual example of what you're going to get in real time. Uh, we can add in drag and drop. We can uh, use familiar interfaces that you already know, like those in Excel. This is really just the start of reporting on Raisley. This is upgrading what we have now. Um, and I think there's so much that we want to do in the future. The team is bursting with ideas and kind of analytics and, and, and insights as well. Um, but all of this made a pretty formidable brief for us for uh, two months. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up there and, and Laura can show you how it went from there. But I'm just going to briefly pause before I hand over to Laura just to see if there's any questions on, on anything I've shared so far. Posting the clap in the chat. I think everyone's probably just keen to see it instead of hearing me talk. Yeah, I reckon we'll just dive in, Tom. Dive in. All right. Yeah. Um, Laura, I'll uh, I'm just going to navigate the screen share. I'll... Yeah. Oh. Awesome. 
Can everyone see my screen? We've got it. Awesome. Great. Uh, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to begin also by um, acknowledging that I'm calling in from the beautiful surf coast, the land of the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin nations, and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. Okay, um, when we started working on reports, um, from the feedback that we gathered, really two of the main goals that emerged were, um, number one was how can we make reporting more convenient in general? And the second one was how do we make it as easy and intuitive as possible to build custom reports? Um, as you might've already noticed, reports has moved from within a campaign level where it used to sit after the organization level, which was due to um, us uh, enabling um, organization-wide reports. So now you can access all of your reports across all the campaigns in one place and quickly and conveniently manage them in here. So when you go into your safe reports, um, each of these safe reports will appear here. You can see the report um, name and then you can see the report type and what campaigns you're reporting on. On the right hand side, you can see whether or not that report is scheduled and what kind of schedule it has, and you can also download it. So this is kind of addressing the side of how do we make it as easy as possible for you to manage those existing reports. And um, you can then, Tom's already mentioned, schedule those reports really to make it even easier for you to access any existing reports. So you can go in, you, you can create a schedule, you can edit your schedule, and then it will be sent out to your email. You can also see once you schedule a report, you can see the report um, history and whenever it's been sent out, you can see who it's been sent to, what the date rate was, when it was sent out, and you can also access any of those historic reports. So they're all saved in here, which will hopefully make managing those reports a lot easier. Now, whenever you create a new report, which you do here, it will then be saved to your safe report. So it will show up here. You can also go back in anytime and edit any of your safe reports and modify them if you need to. You can also duplicate them. Like if you've got a great report for campaign A, you can duplicate it to use it for campaign B if you want to. Now, um, creating a custom report can be quite overwhelming. Um, so we try to make that easier and more digestible by breaking down the process into several steps and guiding you through it. So when you create a new report, um, the first thing you do is um, you choose a report type. So the report type is really the main information in my report and it determines what each row in my report um, represents. So for example, in a donation report, every row would represent a donation. Um, we've also given you um, a range of templates to start from. So we've got like several donation um, report templates um, and also regular donation schedule templates and so on. Um, you can take those templates and you can customize them to suit exactly your needs. So they're really just a starting point. Um, in the next step, you then choose the campaigns you report on. This is something you can change later. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, you can. Um, either report on all campaigns, which will be all campaigns existing and future. So when you create a new um, campaign, it will be added automatically to this report, or you can manually select any campaigns that you want to report on. Um, and then we come really into the core piece um, of this reporting upgrade, which is our visual drag and drop reports builder. Um, one of the main frustration points of the old reporting really was that you would select um, a lot of the custom fields and it was hard to predict what you would get out at the end. Well, it was kind of like a trial and error situation. You had that black box and then you download your CC and you're like, mm, this is not exactly right. Or I've applied a filter and like, I'm not, I'm actually just getting blanks. So what we've done is we tried to make that black box visible and you can actually see while you build it, what you will get. Um, so here on the left hand side, we've got um, our fields, which are both the core fields, as well as any custom fields that I'm adding to my campaigns. Um, the fields depend on your report type. So every report type will have slightly different fields, depending on the data structure. Um, you already, because we've started from a template, um, you get a few um, fields in your report. Um, you can add any new fields that you want to add to it. Um, 
to your report simply by dragging it onto here. Now, um, over here, you can see the live preview of the report. Um, a few things, there's a few great features here in this live preview. Um, one of the first ones, the most important ones is, this is a live preview of your actual data. So this will be what you will be getting in the end. This makes it really, really useful and helpful for like um, debugging any reports. For example, if you have too many filters and you get blanks, you can see that straight away and you can fix it before you output your report. Um, we also, a part, you also um, down here, we indicate how many results you get. Um, this will change if you add, for example, more filters. Um, if you switch over, let's say, to test data, which is anything that is not that happens within your test mode in your campaigns. So that's not actual real donations that came in. These are just test donations. You can see I now get 31 results. Um, another feature we've added in here is um, customizing the um, structure of your report. So you can change any the order of your columns if you need to match, for example, a specific template. You can rename any of your labels simply by clicking rename. Um, and as Tom mentioned, we've also added the feature to add an empty column if you need to. Um, again, you can give that any name you want, and you can enter a default value that will then be um, added for that whole column. Okay. Um, we've also added filtering in here. So um, on most of the core fields, we've got filters available. You can see whether or not a field has a filter available by that little filter icon here to create a filter um, on any field. So you can click here and you can create a new filter. Um, and then you get um, this little mod model here where you can add your filter conditions. And so this example, let's say method is offline probably. Um, you can save it and then you'll see the preview already updated. We now get a lot less results. Um, and you can see it's got a little blue outline just for you. So if you go back in later and you edit the report, you can see, oh, I've applied a filter here. And in the future, you might want to remove the filter depending on your needs. Yeah, and that really is um, most of the features. You can give each of your reports a custom name if you want to. Um, just click in here and rename it. Um, again, you can change the campaigns um, that you're reporting on anytime. Um, you can just click in here and edit your selection and go back. Uh, once you're done um, creating your report, you can save it and then you can either download it straight away or you can schedule it um, and it's being sent out to you via email um, if you want to do that. Yeah. That's our new reporting features. Um, any questions? Laura, that's great. Thanks so much for the walkthrough. <laughs> uh, friends, if you have any questions, feel free to put them up uh, in there. We've had a couple just in regards to the chat. Largely sort of talking around how we look at um, Stripe reporting and Stripe integration uh, when it comes into Razy's reporting. Tom, you're a wonderful person to sort of ask in regards to this. Would you maybe a bit of comment on how sort of Stripe integrations work across our reporting uh, in that relationship? Yeah. Um, so we've upgraded bank payout reports as well, which is our main kind of integration with Stripe reporting here. Um, I don't know, Laura, if you've got any, if, if, if we're going to be able to show it, I, we might not have any test data here. I do. I've got the Razor account connected. Yeah, cool. So, um, at the moment, we don't have a payout date on the save on micro donations report, but um, there was also a thing that we kind of kept hearing from folks around the bank power reports previously that were quite inflexible. And actually, the functionality we had into bank power reports has remained unchanged for about four years. So we, we've changed it now in that time. Um, and so when you have a Stripe account connected to Raisley, you can have a bank payout. Um, you'll have a uh, the account will show here and you'll be able to download bank payout reports for that account, which is every um, deposit you get into Stripe 
you can get a report for all of the donations in that deposit. And that includes things like refunds or other charges. So essentially it's a way to reconcile your deposits in Stripe. Um, and Laura, if you just quickly uh, click edit report template, mm -hmm. For bank part reports, we've customized them. So previously, it was impossible to change the information that was inside the bank part report, um, and we've made that possible. So the same report builder is now available for payout reports. You can rename filled fields. You can, um, I'm fairly sure you can add blank fields. So maybe not. Yes, you can. No blank fields. Um, and you can add uh, all sorts of different um, data from across races. So they're much more flexible now. So hopefully that, that helps. Um, and so, that template is essentially will apply to all like all of the um, reports from that Stripe account. So you're essentially setting a template and every time you download a, a report for a particular payout, it uses this, this template to, to generate that report. Great, thanks Tom. I hope that was helpful for you as you sort of went through. We've got a couple of questions coming through. Um, one of the ones is in regards to um, the fact that almost overnight, all your reports got sort of put into a new um, space and, and, and a new area. And for some people, you may have had so many reports uh, in there. And one of them was like, we have seven pages now of reports. And we can kind of imagine that that would be um, something a little bit difficult to work through. Um, one of the, the, the main thing we wanted to make sure was that no data was missed or the, your hard efforts before reporting were forgotten. Uh, so being able to merge all your existing reports over in a legacy format um, was there to really just make sure that your hard work wasn't lost uh, as we do our thing. One of the recommendations we would have for many of the reports that you do want to be keeping uh, is to duplicate those reports so that you have full functionality using the new report builder. That would be one thing we'd look at. Um, but one of the nice parts is we'd really sort of love you to sort of, if you can, maybe audit some of your reporting and sort of thinking about maybe some of the categories that they can be coming under. Um, having pages and pages and pages full of reports can be a little bit tricky. So uh, thank you for that. Yes, we do realize that you may have had a lot of reports in the legacy space. Uh, we have, you, you can be encouraged to sort of start putting those into the, in the new report builder and enjoy some of the new features. Um, one thing just to add there, James, um, is that you can filter your reports by campaign just via that select campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, little drop down at the top, so that'll show you just reports for that campaign. And also when you're in a campaign, um, there is still a reports button on the side, uh, um, just like there was before, um, which essentially will show you the same thing. So when you're in a campaign, you just click reports, it links out over to that page with that campaign essentially preset. So you can still access all of the reports you had before without having to sort through all of those pages. You can just filter it through either of those methods. One of the other questions that's come through is, can you actually share your schedule report with another user? Laura, can they? Yes. There's a thumbs up. How, how, <laughs> yeah. how would someone do that? Um, so you can do that two ways. Either you can go in into your site reports here, and when you expand that card, you can see what's their schedule report. Um, so in that interface here, you can, so you set your schedule settings, obviously how often you want to schedule, and then you do, um, schedule reports to email. When you turn it on, you can add recipients. So the recipient has to be um, a part of your team on Raisley. Um, at the moment, I've only got myself in my account, so I can only select myself. Um, but you can simply do it like that. And then um, you select your date range that you want the report to generate and you schedule it. There you go. Thank you, Laura. Um, one of the questions came in, is there a way to narrow down the report to pull donations from a certain uh, from certain fundraisers in one campaign? Uh, that's a really good question. There's probably uh, one of the nice parts with the report builder, there's a thousand ways to skin the proverbial cat. So the um, one of the ways you could look at doing that would either be if you do know you can filter down by name would be an option. Uh, another way would be to maybe create a custom field that you sort of want to associate with different users that you could uh, uh, sort of enable that and use filters uh, that would incorporate into your donation report uh, to filter those out. Does any of the other team have any other sort of ways that we could maybe be doing that? No, I think that's probably, I think there's still a bit of work 
to do um, in terms of narrowing down donations from certain fundraisers, because at the moment you can only filter on uh, um, core fields on the donation. So you can't filter on the profile, um, which is something we'd love. This was a really common question that we wanted to address in this upgrade. So I think uh, I think we've got the infrastructure in place now to allow that in the future. Um, so there's a few there's a few workarounds. There's definitely better better workarounds than we had before now, but um, I think there's a bit more product work we can do to make that easier as well. Super. Thanks, Tom. Now here's an interesting question in regards to looking at gross donations uh, and then amount for an audit. Now, bank payout reports and regular reporting sort of in there. We do now sort of show you a lot of the fields available for you to actually pull data from within the new report builder. Tom, can you give us any guidance as to maybe how we would approach that? Yeah. So in the bank payout report, um, that is all, so, so gross donations, stripe fee and net amount are all are available in all donation reports. So they're available in a donations report that you can just download by date. They're also available in the bank payouts report. Um, in the bank payouts report, you have, um, maybe Laura, if I can just get you to open up the template again, just to visualize it. Um, so in the, in the bank payout report, you have transactions. The transactions are kind of like lines on a bank statement because that's essentially what is figured out in your um, in your Stripe deposit. So you'll see here in this example, we've got a refund, which is a negative uh, amount, and then we've got charges, which are positive amounts. Um, you, you can add fields to this report from donations that capture total, which is gross, um, uh, amount, which is net raising fee, and there is also a field called net, which is net all fees um, here. So you've got all of those fields available, which you can add to the bank payout report, um, along with any custom fields that you want and, and those kinds of things. Super, thanks Tom, hope that helps. Uh, how can we add custom fields into our report? Now, the nice part is typically your custom fields will appear on the left-hand side of the page builder. So if you put a, custom field in, uh, you'll always have the options of what sort of type of field you want to use for that, whether that's a donation field or it's a profile field or, or other. Now your custom field will also be under that type. So if you add a new custom field for a donation type, it's gonna be under your donation column that you'll find there as well. Uh, if you can't find it, send support a message, we'll find it for you. <laughs> but in almost all cases, your custom reports, uh, your custom fields will also exist uh, alongside all the other fields available in the types. There's a few questions in the chat as well, Jane. There are so many questions in the chat. I've yes. got pages. Now, just so you are aware, we do, uh, we are copying all of these down, uh, which is great. And so we do seek to sort of respond to many of these, even within FAQs and support articles and things like that are really, really helpful. Laura or Tom, if you see one that you'd like to pick up, feel free. I think um, there's one from Ken here on time zone, which is probably a helpful heads up for everyone. Um, you know, we've now added a time zone setting to basically. Um, uh, so there are two things when we're looking at dates in the you know, report that you can customize. The first is the time zone, the second is the date format. Um, you'll see it there in that kind of example that Laura is showing. So you can download reports in both time zone for your organization or UTC. UTC is GMT zero, it's like zero time, London time. Um, you can pick that time zone that is best for your organization under your organization setting, where you can also change your date format and the day of the week that you want your reports to start. Um, so that is under yeah, organization, organization, and then you can set a time zone, a date format and a first day of the week. Um, that means that all of the dates in your report are going to show in that time zone. So if you want to say like the time a donation was made, we convert it into that particular time zone for your report. So some systems like things to be particular formats or particular time zones, so you can customize that now across the organization. Oh, it's helpful. One of the interesting questions in there, Tom, which is probably really helpful, is the concept of permissions and uh, people's uh, access to running reports. Can you explain a little bit how that might work, Laura or Tom, in regards to if uh, someone creates a report, who else has access to it? 
jump in. Um, so when you create a report, that report is in your account and everyone who's got access to reports can see it. So when you create a report, it's not just you can see it, it's any other admin. Now, as an admin of Razorly, you know, if you're Razorly account, everyone can see all this, they can see all the data in the account, they can download that. Razorly does have different permission settings that can control this. Uh, so if I'm a campaign administrator, I can build reports just on data in that campaign, just for that campaign. So I can still use this tool. Um, we also have another role, which is a campaign report downloader or something like that. It's essentially a specific permission for campaign reports that you can assign people, which gives them access to build reports, but not necessarily change stuff in your campaign. Um, and we have the same for bank power reports. So there's a bank power report viewer and a campaign report viewer. Um, so you can give that permission to people to, to do reporting without necessarily letting them change things. Um, the other thing to note though, is that when you're scheduling a report and sending it out to people, although you can only uh, send it to specific, uh, to admins, you can't send it to any other email address, which is a security thing that we've, we've set up. Um, those administrators don't need to have particular permissions. So all they need to do is be an admin on Raisley, um, uh, and by adding them to the report, you're essentially saying that they can see this information when when, when you schedule it. So it's a it's a good way to uh, have really granular kind of access to data. If you just want to give someone very limited access to Raisley, but then uh, send them a report um, with the group. Super, thanks, Tom. Uh, Jesse writes in: um, Can you run reports from draft campaigns? Now, draft campaign is probably what we call a test campaign. Um, in there and the reality is yes you can uh, when you go to select uh, campaigns and you have the options there for all campaigns or manual selection click manual selection and you'll see a little drop box that says show test campaigns and through that you can pick whichever ones you want which is kind of cool um, can you merge two fields into one column? That would be so nice uh, wouldn't it? <laughs> because much of the data that you do get you kind of like I've got two fields, they're really valuable. I can't want to see the one in the middle. Um, at the moment, no, um, but there are some ways. The nice part is, is that all of your data is exported as a CSV. So what you do with your CSV file after that is really up to you. It's one of the reasons why we love the blank column. Um, we saw some of the creative uses of that was put in Excel spreadsheet formulas uh, that enable uh, the combination of those two uh, fields to appear when you actually go to do the export. So we'd, reckon, um, we'd recommend some flexibility and using things like that um, until maybe we look down the track whether we can do merge fields and things like that. Um, but for now, you can't. Um, but enjoy your CSV file and get the most out of that as well. Um, can you run reports by field from our sign-up forms rather than by a person? That's a really interesting question. Let me, can we run reports by field from our sign-up forms rather than by the person. I'm trying to work out what the question's asking. Tom, would you know? I mean, Jesse, maybe if you want to, if you want to clarify, essentially each of the, when you're choosing a report type, um, what we're actually asking you technically is what do you want on each row of your, of your spreadsheet? Uh, and so when I pick a donations report type, it's one row per donations. When I pick a, uh, profiles report type it's one row per profile um and so that's the kind of the limitation of spreadsheets i guess um uh, so if i pick a profiles report i can add custom fields to that report whatever i've asked whether that's on the uh, registration form whether that's kind of other custom fields kind of uh, coming in um and, and you'd be able to have that um uh, coming through in the, in the report per line but there might be a more specific question here, which we can, um, which we can workshop with you to, to try to figure out kind of a, a good, a good solution. Um, uh, yeah, with you, Jack. For sure. Writing Jesse through our support, I'll make sure our team followed up for you. That would be really good. Um, one of the questions was, uh, if I have uh, a old customer report, uh, how do I get that report scheduled? As we said, um, the easiest way to do that would be probably to duplicate that report so you have full functionality of the new report builder. But Laura, you might, um, isn't it crazy? I actually haven't checked that one. Laura, can you actually schedule a report that's already in legacy? No, you can't. Oh. No, so like this, sorry. 
Um, yeah, this, yeah. for example, is a legacy report that came that came across, and you see it's missing the schedule section in here. Mm. And to get that, um, so the simple reason is it doesn't have an owner that created that report, and you need an owner to enable um, scheduling. Um, you can really easily get that. All you have to do is duplicate that report, save it, and then you can see you already get the schedule button here, and it pops up here at the top of your saved reports, and now you've got the option to schedule it for the future. Thank you, Laura. Just wanted to double check on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, friends, we've got a lot of questions sort of in there. And one of the things we will do is um, we've saved all those and we'll make sure that we can respond um, uh, to those sort of post-webinar as well. I want to just go through and just give you some highlights into some of the um, sort of support that you can receive uh, in regards to reporting um, at the moment. So if, Laura, you, you already got your screen open, would you better get a Raisley support for us? Now, one of the things we want to be doing is making sure that our infant support articles that are there currently continue to grow to help you look at what your sort of um, either frequently asked question might be, or particularly sort of some of your use cases that you're looking at doing. If you can now go into support and it's all categorized under the different sort of focus areas. So if you go into payment and reporting, you'll find some new articles in there, uh, such as reporting the basics, using filters in reporting, if you want an explanation of report types, templates, and some ideas, um, you can go into that. That's a really helpful one. We're also looking at uh, sort of more thematic uh, articles as well, such as capturing the right data and just sort of helping you sort of think through some of the ones that you're going to be uh, putting through on that, such as custom fields and such. One of the ones we're going to be um, adding soon is how to maybe visualize your data by using some free um, softwares outside of Razor and how to use your CSV file the best that you possibly can to sort of draw some insights. So you'll be able to find a lot of the support uh, uh, available there, um, which we hope will be helpful. So please uh, don't hesitate to write in. Um, let us know what might be helpful for you to see within our support documentation. We'll make sure those go up into some of the FAQs as well. Some of the things that are coming out more is that we're going to be doing some video content and some more practical walkthroughs uh, through some reportings. So as I said before, the more you talk to us about what you'd like this feature to be, the more we can sort of show you some solutions and things that you can do around that. Now I'm going to hand it back to the team. There's sort of a couple of other questions that have sort of come on through. Uh, if Tom, you want to pick either, either some of them up or Laura. Yeah, there's one that's come through from Italy around international currency that might be interesting um, to a few folks. So um, Raisley makes it easy to take donations in, in, in 130 currencies and report on them. Um, the key here is the campaign currency. So when you're creating a campaign, you'll notice that you pick a currency for that campaign. For a lot of you, that currency is probably the same across all of your campaigns. We do have a few organisations that might have a campaign in NZD and AU. In the US um, when you're building your report, there are fields that are often prefixed with campaign, like campaign total or campaign currency or campaign amount that are essentially the amount in the campaign currency. And so that is, uh, Razor will convert all of those amounts into, say, if you're using uh, reporting uh, to download donations and you want all of those donations to be an AUD, then you can add those specific campaign fields, campaign amount, campaign total um, uh, to your report to get all of the amounts in the one currency. If you just use the total and the amount fields, then it's going to be in the currency of the donation. Um, so there's, there's, there's that data there ready for you. It's available. Um, and Shireen's also, uh, when you customize bank power reports, do those fields stay in that order in perpetuity? Uh, or do you have to do this with daily report downloads? No, you do not need to do it daily. That would be so annoying. <laughs> they stay in. So once you customize that template, it's it's then uh, it's then like that for every future, every download, even retrospective downloads. Um, so if I customize the report and I want to download, I think it's a test account with old data, if I want to download that report from 2016, uh, it will be in the new format. Um, you can change that template at any time, but no, you don't need to do that daily. Um, Maggie's asked, Laura, if you could show how to find custom fields in the report builder. 
Do you want to do a quick little demo of that? I don't know if you've got any custom fields set up. I don't have any custom fields set up, unfortunately. Yeah. I've, got, a... I've got one if you want to <laughs> throw, yeah, throw it over. I'll, I'll hand over to you too. Me... <laughs> Where are we? There we are. Uh, let's go all campaigns. Next. Cool. So I've got a donation one called first profile first time fundraiser. So two of the ways you can actually do uh, your custom fields is number one, just search for them. The little search bar at the top is really helpful. If it's not coming up there, most likely uh, uh, the best suggestion would be contact support and we'll work out how to find it for you. So using the search bar is going to be really, really helpful. But as we sort of said before, I created this uh, profile field uh, for the custom report. And you can see down here, profile first time fundraiser, which was just a quick custom field to allocate a yes or no about whether that person was a first time fundraiser or not. So your custom fields should all exist within the type in which the custom field was developed for that. If you need to find that out, you can simply just go back uh, to Raisley uh, organization and go to custom fields and you'll find which category it is just up the top there, uh, donation person or profile, and it will exist um, under there. Hope that helps Maggie. If you still don't find it, please let us know and we will make sure we find it for you. Yeah, last question, but we've also um, got one from Stephanie about bank part reports and filters, um, which the short answer is you can't filter a bank part report. We didn't build it in because the bank part report is already filtered to that particular payout. Um, so we weren't aware of any kind of uh, use cases is what we're just <laughs> jargoning we weren't aware, aware, aware of any, any reasons you'd want to filter a bank part report further. Um, but would be really interested to hear in what that reason might be. Uh, so if you write in and, and let us know, uh, we can consider that then for, for the future. Well, we promised that this webinar we have for 45 minutes and we know you guys have very, very busy welts. Um, so let me encourage you uh, just to thank you so much for being a part of uh, this webinar with us. As we expressed before, we're really excited about this new reporting feature, but more so we're excited about being able to take on your feedback around how we can improve Raisley for you. We have a few things coming up, which is really exciting, apart from the holidays, which we really hope you all enjoy. Um, but please let me encourage you to, if you do need some support and help at the moment uh, with any of your campaigns, as we know it's a busy season, do reach out to our support team. They'll be blessed to be here from you and I'm sure they would love to wish you a happy holiday. Um, we also, if you are new to Raisley uh, and it's still exploring, we'd really love to um, make sure we offer out uh, our demos uh, with, our, uh, with our team. They would love to take you through any of the questions that you may have uh, of Raisley um, as you look into the new year as well. If you haven't already looked at our new blog, I'd really encourage you to do that as well. You'll find some great resources available to really upskilling uh, as a fundraiser and really exploring the world uh, of sort of digital online fundraising. Uh, so check that out. It looks great. The team are having a lot of fun putting some great content up on there. We've got some new features coming up. Uh, uh, literally released this week was a QR code block, uh, which uh, we're all very, very familiar with QR codes these days. So we hope you enjoy that. But what a great way to help your uh, fundraisers advertise their campaigns. Uh, so that's a great little block and you'll find some support articles and even some video content uh, being uploaded for that block later on today. Another thing is we're going to be launching uh, our YouTube channel for Raisley and putting a lot more video content up there to help you as a learner of Raisley uh, sort of understand all things better there. There'll be a whole bunch of tips and tricks uh, and a whole bunch of walkthroughs, a whole bunch of uh, content going up over the next couple of months. So stay tuned. You'll see some good things coming through. That's about it. I love to talk. We'll probably keep it there. Otherwise, we'll go on all day. You've got wonderful, busy worlds. Enjoy the reporting feature. We hope you get a lot out of it. And please continue to stay ambitious with Raisley. And we love supporting you doing that. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye. See you, everyone.